If you're a soccer enthusiast of any age, chances are you've come across Ed Cerner and Stone Asimento. However, you might not recognize him because Mr. Donacimento is better known as Pele, and Pele stands among the footballing greats of all time. Don't just take our word for it, Bobby Moore, Franz Beckenbauer, and Eusebio hailed him as the most complete footballer they've ever witnessed. Argentinian coach Cesar Luis Minotti went on to describe him as a blend of Alfredo Di Stefano, Diego Maradona, Johan Cruyff, and Leo Messi. Michel Platini, the legendary French midfielder, summed it up best, saying, to play like Pele is to play like God. Now, more than 40 years after his retirement, the question arises, how good was Pele actually? Pele burst onto the scene as a 17-year-old, overcoming a knee injury before the 1958 World Cup. His Brazilian teammates insisted the coaching staff include him in the squad, having experienced his skill in training. Pele went on to score the winner against Wales in the quarter-final, a hat-trick in the semi-final against France, and two goals in the final against Sweden, leading Brazil to a 5-2 victory. At just 17, Pele became the youngest ever world champion and the global superstar. Pele also secured a World Cup win in 1962, despite missing most of the tournament due to injury. Eight years later, in 1970, he clinched the title for a third time, an achievement unmatched by any other player. At Santos, Pele won 10 Sao Paulo State Championships and two Copas Libertadores, the South American equivalent of the Champions League. His most outstanding individual performance came against Benfica in 1962, where he scored five goals across two matches, helping Santos win 8-4 on aggregate. Pele's popularity was such that Santos withdrew from the Copa Libertadores and embarked on a world tour, playing lucrative friendlies globally, akin to football's Harlem Globetrotters. In 1967, even during the Nigerian Civil War, a 48-hour ceasefire was agreed upon for rival troops to watch Pele play. Pele was an all-round genius, a natural athlete excelling in strength, speed, and aerial prowess. A superb dribbler and passer, he could finish with both feet. By the time of his retirement, Pelé had scored 1281 goals, an all-time record, with 77 for Brazil, surpassing the likes of Ronaldo, Neymar, Romário, Zico, and others. Pelé's versatility was unparalleled. Whether playing as a number 10, a wide forward, or a striker, many considered him the best in the world in all three positions. Brazil's coach, Zéo Saldana, even declared Pelé the best in various positions, be it right back, left back, midfield, or center forward. Back then, the Ballon d'Or was exclusive to European-based players like Raymond Copa, Eusebio, Bobby Charlton, George Best, and Gert Muller. However, everyone, including his rivals, acknowledged that Pelé was the true number one. Now, let's compare Pelé to today's legends, namely Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. All three are hailed as candidates for the greatest of all time. Pelé shared certain similarities with the modern duo. Like Ronaldo, he dominated in the air, regularly outjumping taller defenders. He also resembled Messi in his ability to drop deep, carry the ball, and excel in creating and converting chances. However, football was vastly different in Pelé's era, with poor pitches and lenient refereeing allowing defenders to assault forwards without repercussions. Some argue that Pelé's greatness lies in overcoming these obstacles. He boasts three World Cups, unlike Messi and Ronaldo, who have none. Yet, in today's game, the pinnacle is the Champions League, where Messi and Ronaldo have won nine between them. It's worth noting that over 500 of Pelé's goals came in unofficial friendlies and tour games, including those for the sixth Coast Guard in a military competition. While some may argue this diminishes his genius, Pelé undeniably stands as one of the greatest footballers in history. Opinions vary, with some insisting he's still number one, while others believe Messi and Ronaldo have surpassed him. Everyone's preferences are influenced by factors like age, nationality, club allegiance, and personal taste. In the end, the debate about whether a player from one era is better than another remains inconclusive, and perhaps that's what makes football discussion so enjoyable.